started here. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. We are coming in live from NAB. Everybody, say hi back there. Hi back there. Good morning. <laughs> so this is this is largely the group that shows up for a lot of the live shows. I see a bunch of people in the chat rooms here. We're going to do introductions. Let's just do a quick round round robin introduction, and uh, and then we'll stabilize the camera and come up and do a little interviews. So let's start with Bill over here. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Bill Strail from uh, Maryland. And Nice. You can speak up nice and loud. Paul Hiram from St. Louis, Preserver Media Group. Uh, Mark Johnson, Mark Johnson Productions. Mark, right on. Dimitri Fraser from Seattle. Who's Max that over there? From Max from YouTube. Max from YouTube. I live on YouTube. <laughs> my name is Sean Mansfield. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I create content. My company is called Flying Eagle. Nice. Nice intro. See, you guys, what are you guys doing? You're not my promoting name is yourselves. I'm Smith. I'm a student at MIT. Sweet. I'm Cliff Totten, I'm with uh, Discovery Channel Latin America. Thanks. Come hey, on. I'm Adin Guryev. I work with my brother, Max, on YouTube. We're from Sokea. Nice. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, there we go. There is the crowd. Let me get the camera back in here. Make sure you can stable it out that way a little bit. And uh, who wants to go first? Come on. I want you guys to come up here and tell me what your... Actually, before we do, let's get into the comments here and just see what's going on because there is already a bunch happening here. So let's see. Good morning, Martin Pitt. Awesome, glad to see you here. Sheila House, Faked Cube. You guys know all these names. Uh, see, Faked Cube says, I think things will work fine. Last night, oh yeah, if they're talking about the stream. Last night I went to the booth, got the guys there to help me figure it out. So yeah, we are using the Video U Pro right now. And one of the key things we're doing right now that's different is I've got a 4G modem plugged into it. Turns out the Wi-Fi in my unit is completely messed up, so that's why I've had so many problems. Plugged into this, though, it seems to be working just fine. So hopefully it'll stay that way. Let's see. Ooh, and this thing's talking. Let me turn this down. We're going to get an echo. All right. Uh, anybody else saying? It was just chit chat. Everybody's saying good morning. And yeah, <laughs> Martin, they're seeing you now. They're calling. <laughs> There's Max. <laughs> and Sheila says, not one woman in the room. I know, Sheila. It's like you're, you're almost the only one. <laughs> you should have come here. You should have come here to NAB. All right, guys. Uh, oh, Mike Weaver's from Spokane. Apparently, he's a. You know him? He's one of your. No? Hey. He's one of two. Yeah, I, I'm sure he's, he's done it. So, all right, so uh, well, you want to come up here and talk about sure, what you see? Sure. All right, come on up. So uh, yesterday I spent the majority of my morning in the North Hall where the virtual reality slash 360 oh, cool. stuff is located. And so it's interesting to see how many companies are jumping in and coming up with really, looks like awesome products and on the under $600 price point. Okay. So for instance, Yi is gonna come out, I wanna say around May, maybe June with their 360 camera for $400. Wow. And it's gonna do 4K 30. Uh, what was interesting is that Google has picked Yi Technologies as their, there's something called the Thalos, which uses, let's say, more than 10 cameras. Okay, They've right. They've done custom hardware that can control all of these things for the small price tag of $17,000. But what's interesting is that Google picked Yi over, say, uh, GoPro. Right. So to right. me, that's interesting. Uh, okay. Yi is going to come out with a drone. Looks like it's got a lot of really cool technology built in. What's interesting is Yi seems to have embraced the Amborella H2 chip, which has been out since January of 2016, was the leader, hasn't seemed to embrace that particular chipset, and it does so much more. So it's interesting to see these shifts of companies who most people would have never heard of right, a year right. ago coming to the forefront. Yeah, that's always one of the best parts of NAB, right? You find the companies you've never heard of before doing something way cool. Right. And they might be gone in a year, or they might be the next DJI. Right. And know. then it's like Kodak, who sort of seemed to drop off the face of the earth, seems to have a chance of resurrecting itself in the 360 mm -hmm. arena with their new camera that's coming out. Sounds like it's going to be May or June as well. Cool. Cool. So to me, that was the most interesting thing, you know, plus actually taking the information you've given for the live streaming and diving down the rabbit right. hole. Yeah, that's, that that's a big rabbit hole. It's not a rabbit hole, it's an abyss. <laughs> that it is. Cool. Thank right you. on. Well, thanks for, thanks for coming. All right. Who else wants to go and tell us what you've seen at NAB? What's one of the coolest, most exciting bits and pieces? Who's next? Don't make the live audience wait. They're, they're waiting. They're right, on pins right, and needles. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. All righty. 
Come in nice and close here, so obviously you're going to be just on that mic, so Perfect. speak up a little bit. and uh, Yeah, hey everybody, yeah. it's Mark Johnson. It's <laughs> so cool, it's good to, it's good to meet it's you, It's so man. cool to have, a, have you know, real, the real face to the name. I know, it doesn't feel real yet. I'll watch the show later and be like, I was on that. I was there, I was there. Yeah. Right on. Uh, yeah, so so what, what have you seen at any of you? What's kind so of blown you away? Yesterday I went there, and of course I'm doing my own coverage and carrying on my whole interview set up and doing okay. that. Um, but uh, yesterday, I saw a lot of cool things, but I actually met a whole bunch of really cool people and saw a lot of friends. I've been doing this for three years now, covering the show. Okay. So yesterday I actually spent more time hanging out and shaking hands and checking yeah. stuff out. Uh, but I did get to see some cool stuff the first night when I was in over at the Appy Tree booth. So okay. I, I, I've known those guys for a while and they make some really cool lighting products. Okay. And uh, and they've got some more really cool lighting products. They've got a, a 300D, which is a gigantic like 2K equivalent LED light that they're trying to sell for, I think they're aiming for under $1,000, okay. wow. which is amazing. Um, but then they're also coming out with their mini 20s, which are much smaller, and they have bicolor versions and stuff like that, so you can shove it in a backpack with three of them and go do an interview thing. So, right. so the bicolors, cool. always, I always find that interesting, because I like the idea, right? but if you need full daylight or full tungsten or whatever the warmest is, then your half the LEDs are off. Yeah, you lose you lose half your output. Right. So, so that's why like what I'm using here is this little Felix light. Yeah, the Felix ones are great. Yeah, they're great. You get consistent uh, output throughout the entire color range. Yeah. yeah. And I tend to go at least in my professional work, I end up going and I have to travel around and shoot like uh, interviews, and I end up in office spaces and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so I end up working in smaller spaces, but always with mixed lighting. So I always tend to get the bicolor ones because then I can dial to wherever right. I need to be for like right. the hideous room that I'm in. Right. Right. And I don't need to be blasting it with a whole bunch. But yeah, there is something to be said if you want output to go for either yeah. a full tungsten or a full daylight, because you will you will get double the output. So right, right. Cool. Do you, when you're balancing there, are you just doing it by eye or do you use a color temperature meter? A lot of times I'll do it by eye because I've gotten good at it, sort of like dialing in, just looking at the screen. So I'll sort of dial the camera in first and see where skin tones are looking kind of right. And then I'll, I'll, I'll start hitting it and I can dial my light to match that. Right. Other times I will do and, and pull off, you know, hold up a white card off right. whatever and, and pull balance and get it right. I've got a, so. a device that I kickstarted, <clears throat> excuse me, that I paid on the Kickstarter, and it should be with me very soon. It's Luma something, and it's a plug-in. Oh, the Lumu? The Lumu power thing that just plugs right into your iPhone? Yeah, it's the new one that does color temperature. Yeah, that's the, the Lumu power. I, okay. I, I remember I saw something about that a while ago, and I actually reached out to them to see if I could get a hold of one, but I haven't heard from them yet. Okay, so, I'm gonna reach so yeah, out it's, to they guys. just started shipping to the backers. Very cool. So I'm expecting to have mine really any day. Yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, that was like a year and a half ago or something with back that. That's I'm super thing. excited. Yeah, because yeah. those things, this is $1,000 for a color temperature meter. Yeah, oh yeah, they're not one. cheap at all. Right, so this was, I don't know, whatever, 100 something bucks. Yeah, and, and it's something iPhone. that you can keep on you and just plug right into the bottom yeah. of your phone and all that stuff. And yeah, that's great. Yeah, Another cool thing about black colors that I do is when you want to do some effects in camera. So if you want your background a little right. warmer or cooler, yeah, yeah, or if yeah. someone looks a little pale and you want to warm them up, then you can just dial it a couple hundred degrees and sheet it. Mm -hmm. You can get it right in camera when you don't have time to color grade or whatever. No, that's but a great yeah. way to do yeah, so there's absolutely. always options. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Right it's on. been a cool show, and I'm going to slough my stuff around all day again today. And cool. Hopefully, you have some energy tonight to edit some videos and get yeah, them out there. Yeah, I haven't even started that. Plug your channel. Where can people find your stuff? Uh, it's Port Johnson Productions on YouTube, uh, so you should be able to find me if you guys haven't found me already. And I would appreciate you guys subscribing because, yeah, like I said, I'm going around one man banding it and uh, putting out some interviews and hopefully showing off some good stuff here at the show. Right on. Thanks for coming up, Bart. It was a pleasure meeting you, man. Pleasure, likewise. All right, next, next. All right, who's up now. next? Who's up next? <clears throat> Come on, who's coming up? Who's up? All right, Max. We got a professional here. All right. So, see, so we're gonna get you on camera. We're gonna make sure to focus. We don't want anybody. Oh, do we? We, do, we can raise the camera. I know, right? The tall guys. Let's see. Let's get you up just a little bit here. Whoa. I was shocked how tall Dave was. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. There we go. Let's Let's up, everybody. The focus point on you. So you know. Yeah. Get it nice and tight there. So you guys know Max? Yes. You've probably seen him around once or twice. I think we did a video together, right? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. It's a legend. So what have you seen here at the show? What's uh, What are you finding? There's a lot of people. I actually, so this is my first time being at NAB. Um, I thought we were going to go around and shoot a lot of booths and stuff, whatever's interesting. And I'm certainly going to do that, a little bit of that. But just meeting a lot of uh, followers, people, some people I've never met before. Uh, most of the people I've never met, but some YouTubers and other people that I've noticed in the, in the comments. You know, I love going in the comments and talking to people. Right, right. And then so people come up and they mention their name and you're like, yeah, you know, I remember you. So yeah. that's been really cool. That um, is cool. A lot of expensive stuff <laughs> not a lot of stuff that's in my price range to buy a lot of you see these crazy cranes and reds everywhere 
you have like right. a booth and they have like Reds, Aries, and like all these crazy cameras that are ridiculously expensive. Well, for good reason, but right. so pretty cool. Um, yeah, and this show, the history of the show, it's it was broadcast, and that yeah, was that never right, never cheap. And uh, it's you know the fact that we can now broadcast online. There's all that type of stuff that's showing up in there. But all these all the cameras and all this the support. This is what you're doing. Right, you're broadcasting, broadcasting right, right here. Um, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's remarkable what has happened over the show for the last 15 years. I've been coming here since 2001, and uh, it's incredible to see the change. But a lot more stuff now that appeals to small productions like ours than 15 years ago for well, sure. Well, back then I think it was a lot of just mainly big production studios and stuff like that, mm -hmm. where now there's, with the internet and with YouTube and other platforms, yeah. there's a lot a lot more smaller companies, um, kind of like what I do, you know, yeah. that are putting stuff out, making content for businesses on a lower scale compared to something, you know, 100 grand to shoot. Well, yeah, and people, you, I mean, they still do this, but this show used to all be about companies coming in going, all right, we've got a $120 million budget this year, how are we going to spend it? They're making that decision to NAB, sitting down with the big companies, camera companies, whatever, and deciding what they're going to buy a big budget to spend they got to figure out how to spend the money yeah so now, now, we're, so now we're doing it too but we got we come in we like we got six dollars and a few pennies so we're gonna buy yeah <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to just i've only really saw this like i've been at one little area mm -hmm. so i want to go check out more stuff yeah and what's really interesting is i actually went on uh, facebook people post what new stuff and okay. that's what's actually giving me the advice, like, what should I go look right. at? <laughs> because I'm seeing, oh, this small HD just put out this 5-inch monitor that's bright for outdoors, and it flips around, and it can actually power your camera from the monitor as well. And I'm like, I want to see that. And then, like, a oh, new cool. live streaming thing, I want to go see that. So it actually is probably easier to plan that way, because when you're walking on this stuff it's everywhere, everywhere all yeah. around you. So. Yeah. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, there's some people in the comments are talking about things they want to see, too. Um, let's see, let's just go through some of the comments real quick. Oh, my goodness. So many going on. Um, there was one that I saw about ask. Oh, Quasar. So this is Joel Cape says, I really want to see what's going down on the Quasar science stand. Any chance you'll be popping by? I don't even know what that is. Quasar, I, don't know. I have no idea. I'll add it to my list. I will go see what they're, what they, tell me what they're doing. Put that in the comments here. Let me know what it is they make. Uh, Jeff Ward says, can't be at NAB this year because I bought the new GH5. <laughs> Good choice. Yeah, I think I'll probably choose, even though NAB is cool, the GH5 is cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ask everyone how the new stuff this year compares to previous years at NAB. Okay, Jeff, we will ask that. Hey, guys, we got a question from the, uh, from the chat room. Just in general, how does it compare to last year? What do you think the show is? Better, cooler, more fun, same, I remember up now? I when I was in high school. That was better. <laughs> <laughs> Last year was NAB at that time, this is NAB at this time. You know, it, it's incomparable. It's yeah. like asking what's your favorite film. None of you can answer that with a straight face. <laughs> well, there's your answer. I hope that helped. <laughs> All right, guys. See ya. Let's right, take a look at some of the other comments in here, see if there's anything else we want to address before we get the next person up. Uh, let's see, Marvin's asking, can I do a how to connect the GH5 to Wi-Fi as you can't get yours to work? I will do a whole thing around the app at some point. Uh, I just, it's not been a priority, but I will, I will get to that eventually. Sheila's saying you will represent. Good, Sheila. We're representing the women in the, in the house here. Martin says, do you guys think that point-and-shoot camera days are now numbered with mobiles filling the marketplace? Oh, yeah. They've been numbered for a while. Point-and-shoot cameras are just, they're dying on the vine. Uh, let's see here. So the Quasar Science again, Joel. Let me know what the Quasar Science is. You might have already written that. I haven't gotten down there yet. Jeff Horton says can't beat any of this year because I bought the new GH5. We already hit that. Yep. Uh, all right, good. That's that. Uh, all right, who's up, who's coming up next here? Who's up next? Who wants to talk about? Hey, there we go. The MIT student. Hey. Okay. So, so uh, get a nice close. Introduce yourself. Hi everyone. My name is Quentin go. Smith. Uh, I'm an MIT student. I'm here for fun. Okay, fun so is a good reason to be. Sort here. of my hobby. Um, cool. So yeah, I spent the the whole day walking around a single floor of a single room. Yep. This is my first NAB, so I really didn't have a concept for how big it was. Yeah. So I was in the the south lower hall, which was all the broadcast workflow stuff. Um, so there were sort of three three takeaways I wanted to mention. One was there's a lot of vendors peddling HD based T. Uh, even like pro gear with HD base T. I don't know I what that of. is. What is HD base T? Um, Sounds like HD over internet. It's, it's, over it's HD over RJ45 cables, but not Ethernet. So as a cheaper wow. way to use, so you can you know do a 300 foot. Is that your standard cable. phone cable, RJ45? No, it's the Ethernet cables. Oh, it is. That is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's not. You can't use a switch with it. To Got it. it. Okay. It's, it's like analog over or some, something weird over. Um, Ethernet. But I, I'm used to that being consumer level kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was curious to see these people selling you know, these thousand dollar 
pieces of gear with HD base T instead of an SDI port. Okay. So like instead of a 300 foot SDI cable, which can be pretty expensive. Yeah. So right. I'm, I'm really curious to actually see. No one actually had any demos with HD base uh, T. Vaporware. Okay. But it's like the thing that everyone. They all had like you know bricks they wanted to show. Right. So that was kind of cool. Um, data video has a um, 4K um, video processing device. Um, so, you know, one of the big advantages of 4K when you're filming it, something is that you can go back and crop it and right. get more than one, you know, 1080p-ish thing out of it. So they actually have a live mixer where there's two camera inputs. So it takes two 4K camera inputs, but then you can make eight crops out of it right. and do live mixing. And that was a really cool product, I think. That's cool. Who makes that again? Um, Data Video. Data Video. They're like I, wonder, I, the... I wonder if it's the same booth, because I saw those. I saw a product that did that last okay. year, and I was super impressed with it, and I talked to the Black Magic guys, and I said, come on, we should put this in the ATEM, because the ATEM already brings in 4K. Well, the ATEM barely has scalers to begin with, so. Well, and that's, yeah. But, but it's a, it'd be great. I mean, you, I, you know, it'd have to yeah. be a hardware upgrade, but uh, it'd be a super cool thing to be able to do yeah. when you're doing any kind of production. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Certainly. I mean, we do it all the time in post-production. Right. But to be able to do that in real time, right. You can Absolutely. lock down one 4K camera with a nice, you know, fairly wide-angle lens. You get, you know, right. three or four views. Well, up. that's even what the little Mevo does. It's 4K, and it has it punches in 720p. So mm -hmm. for live broadcast, you have one camera in the middle of the room, and you've got all these different punch ins from it. You can switch between. It's pretty slick. Okay. Yeah. If, I haven't if seen 720p that. is okay. Mevo, you said. Mevo, M E V O. Yeah. Cool. I'll yeah, take a look at that. Are they here? Them? Probably. I'm sure. I haven't seen them yet, but I've I haven't seen them either. But um, yeah. cool. cool. And then the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, there's a people there's a group called OBE. Okay. They also call themselves Open Broadcaster, but they're not the OBS broadcasting okay. system that everyone uses. But they make. Uh, they make hardware and software, but they also do open source encoders. So you can okay. take their software and drop it on a commodity PC and do high quality encoding for, for streaming purposes. Okay. So that looked pretty cool too. Right on. So those, that was all I saw in the lower south hall. And there's like, <laughs> for those of you who haven't looked at the map, there's like five more. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Well, for those of you who can't be here, now you got a couple things to look up online. Go chase those down yeah. and see uh, see how they, see cool. if there's anything of interest to you. Very nice to right meet you. Cool. Nice meeting you. Thanks for coming up. Thank you. Right on. Here's something in Quasar Science. They're high end LED bulbs. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Quasar, high end LED bulbs. Let's see if we can get that in the shot there. Expose for that. There we go. So if you're interested in that, that's what it does. Super. Okay. Next they're up. Here, they're here in Central Hall. They're here in Central Hall. Right on. Thanks. All right, see what else is going on in the comment. Oh yeah, now here's Joel talking about the Quasar cells. Color correct 96 plus CRI LED tubes that fit in standard fluorescent fixtures cost less than 100 bucks a tube. Interesting, okay. Kino flow requesting, nice, nice. <laughs> and Martin says when you hear these guys talking, you suddenly feel like you need to go back to nursery school. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of techie brain power flying around the room here. Sean, come out up here. It's nice to be out here with you this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm a production guy, and to legitimize the, the, the brash comment that I said, oh, last year was last year, this year is this year, is one of the many things that I do when I think in a creative way while I'm here and strolling mile after mile, hall after hall, is I'm thinking about reverse engineering. How can I take this technology? Same thing last year, same thing I did maybe years ago. Well, how can I take this current technology, if here we are in 2017, and make a product out of it that can become a production, that can become an event, that can make a billable hour a piece of equipment that'll work uh, a set of people, mm -hmm. 150 people deep, right down to caterers, right down to cinematographers, and all the way through the middle. For me, right. I'm looking to create content with the gear that's out there. And my other long-winded response, sorry. No, not at all. The peripheral <laughs> knowledge that I see around from a design standpoint, I've always enjoyed looking at the guys that are making towers. The metallurgies that they mm -hmm. make and the architecture. And there are women there, <laughs> there you go. that are speaking intelligently, that have legitimate degrees from some of the most legitimate universities talking metallurgy, architectural, geometrical pattern. And they're talking about land based broadcast equipment. It's the National Broadcast Association. Who has a more legitimate position, a sales table, than these people? But the peripheral knowledge that you pick up, looking at cameras, where they put the handles, where they put the mm -hmm. buttons, the difference between brands that, that want you to follow a protocol and the brands that don't want you to follow a protocol are following a standard. And that same peripheral knowledge is so vibrant and evident in every year that you come, whether it's 15, 16, 17, or 2022 20, in the future that we look at. There are plenty of good things happening on the floor, North Hall, South Hall. I dig the stuff that's out in the open, yeah. the production trucks, the uplinks, the towers, mm. and um, 
you know, there's a lovely space in this crowd here, and that's what I'm here thinking about content, thinking about how to mount a production and build some hours to put some people to work. Sounds good. Love it. Yeah. Right Thanks on. Thanks for including me. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll see you on the beach. <laughs> beach. There's a beach here? Chris, you want to come on here? What are you doing? You got a mic in your hand. <laughs> yeah, Chris Fenwick's going to come up here for a moment. He's uh, he's supposed to be working right now, but what did you do? Did you already introduce your, your guest and bail on him? Who, the first guest I do want to see, but uh, I will see if we get out of here in time. All right, folks, you're coming in a little bit closer here. So you're in that frame there. We had, he's tall. He's another one of these tall guys. Chris Fenwick, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen me give him endless grief whenever he pops into my channel. Plenty of grief about being old. I'm watching this great show on YouTube right now. <laughs> it's very similar to the last guest. <laughs> How funny. How funny. You look, you look, you look different than you just did. So uh, I know you're here the whole time, so you're not on the show floor. So why don't you tell folks I don't even have a badge. I don't even have a badge. I am at NAB. I didn't even sign in. I don't have a badge. I'm going to tell you, I think the Elvis stuff across the street is yesterday, and the stuff that is in our suite here is tomorrow. So what about today? Uh, today's just, we're just screwing around. <laughs> <laughs> no, it stopped broadcasting for some reason, but it's starting back up again, hopefully. Oh, it's the battery. Shoot. I was going to plug it in and I forgot to. Um, all right, we have to reposition it. It's not USB, is it? That's not USB, is it? No. No. Uh, this, the battery doesn't last very long. It, it, and when it gets low, it spontaneously reboots, which is a you know, really handy feature. That is yet another awesome feature in the video. Yeah, so, all right, guys. Well, somebody checks if we're still live <laughs> or if we got back on. I have to. Sorry for the jumbled video here, guys. I'm just extending the legs on my little tripod. Move this thing close to a power port since there was one. And we'll continue the show. It's streaming again. Excellent. Okay, so we're back. So just going to get the cable out of the way. <laughs> I know. Well, they wanted us to not show that room over there, but oh well. Yeah. Oh well. No, here we're just gonna do it like this. We'll we'll end this out here pretty quickly. If you didn't get a chance to say hello yet, I do apologize. But we're gonna limit what we can do here. Let's get cables out of the way. Let's zoom out. We'll do a little bit like this. Yeah. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Yeah. <laughs> Big smiles. Is that? There he goes. Anybody else want to add anything to the show before we uh, before we knock this thing out here? It's a spectacle, and it's well worth any effort to be here and to to look around and see the people. As crowded as it is, there's a it's a marvelous space just to learn something from yeah. just being there and watching everybody interact. That it is. Who are you with? Is it NAB? <laughs> Nobody drank their Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, that's Kool-Aid enough. You know, I think about uh, all the smart people that I've encountered recently at, at, a, at a conference out in California. And, you know, there are a lot of smart people doing smart things that matter in this world. And if you were to take the demographic of who these people are, who we all are, you, you come up with a pretty good slice of America. There should be women sitting in and around us. There's plenty of women, smart women, sitting in and around the display booths over here with all this gear. So this is a reflection of a, a portrait of America. I don't mean to be hopefully, hopelessly idealistic, but you know, I'm having a good time. <laughs> if I can have a good time, we can all. You know, there you, you go. smart guys, you smart guys can have a good time. All right, guys, let's, let's say. The camera industry is contracting a little bit, but you really wouldn't know it by, by yeah, walking around. It doesn't look being. like it. That's how I kept thinking to myself. Is that how, can they, how can this be contracting and kind of sort of you know, evaporating when it's just so huge over there? Yeah. It's like yeah. it's yeah. Two or three million yeah. people. Well, they're I've losing the consumer market, right? This yeah. is yeah. not the consumer market. It's not the consumer market, exactly. Yeah. 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 And everybody I talk to tells me that. I just, yeah. I just hope that the camera manufacturers will still be here in five or ten years without the consumer market. It'll probably whittle its way down to probably five. You, know, you may like compromise and say the prosumer market at least. All right, I'm going <laughs> to. Hey guys, let's, let's end the broadcast here. Everyone want to do a little shout out, say goodbye. Last chance, say goodbye to the live audience. Bye. 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 Thanks for having us. <laughs>
Absolutely, and thank you guys for tuning in. Let's see if we can get this on here. There we go. Thank you all for tuning in and watching live today. We, uh, we're we supposed to be back in the studio tomorrow, back to normal, but I've decided to extend my stay. So tomorrow morning's broadcast is probably just going to happen from the hotel, uh, from my hotel, but we'll figure it out. We'll see you guys next time. If there's comments that I haven't responded to, I'll try and chat to them in the comments uh, before the live chat closes. And if I don't get to that, then just put a comment in there like normal, and I will address it when I can. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye. So you were talking about the um, Ethernet connected stuff. Have you looked it's at the not Ethernet? It uses it. Ethernet cables, but yeah. it's not compatible with Ethernet. Right. So, uh, so you can't use a switch. You can't like route it on your network. Oh, okay. Because there's a.